What's up everybody? I'm Evan from Evans Detailing and Polishing, Chilton, Wisconsin. And I'm Keenan, the shop manager of Evans Detailing and Polishing, Chilton, Wisconsin. And we're here today to explain rake safety and the proper use of a wheel rake. Do's and don'ts, if you will. Do's and don'ts. Over in my shop, I usually don't rake my cut buffs just because I want them to stay stiff and stay strong. Uh, I want to get the maximum amount of cutting power out of them that I can possibly get. Um, and I also either stand on my rake or I hold it in one hand and always keep it aimed away from me. Uh, the buff always spins in the same direction. It spins this way, so I always put it on the right side. So if it does grab out of my hand, it's going to launch it across. This is one of the don'ts of rake usage. When the buff starts to get crusty like this, it starts to leave excess scratches. Uh, what it's doing when it gets crusty is it leaves excess friction, and the excess friction creates hash marks. Um, hash marks are one of the common enemies of metal polishers. Um, whether you're using white or you're using yellow, the rake is definitely your friend in those situations. Anytime I get a yellow buff that I've used like the previous day, or if I haven't used the buff in a couple of hours, the compound's gonna dry and crystallize on there. So we like to rake that off, get some fresh uh, buff material out there to start fresh again so that we're not buffing with the crispy stuff. We don't want to have a cut buff situation on one of our color buffs. Contrary to popular belief, rakes don't work well on cash. I hope you guys enjoyed the do's and don'ts of rake usage. Follow me at Metal Polisher 3826 and me at Keenan Hub. You can also see our, more of our how-to videos on youtube.com forward slash Evan Stager Metal Polishing. Thank you, and I appreciate you guys watching.